quickly, quickly, that side. Look at that, we've got, we've found Karula and both the Cubs. Karula has made another kill. So after she killed that Daika last night, uh, she's killed an adult male Impala. There's young Hosanna on the kill. And little Shongile was actually stalking us, and that's what we started on. Then Hosanna made his way towards his mom. Isn't this amazing? Aren't we absolutely lucky? Karula's got two kills. It means she's going to be with us for a little while. Uh, what it looks like from the tracks that we found, she went to fetch the cubs and on her way back, she must have spotted this impala and it was ideal hunting weather for her last night. Strong windy conditions, dark skies and she managed to catch this adult male impala. Now, Sean's wondering, are there visual differences between male and female leopards that can be seen from a distance? Indeed, they are, Sean, and it's mostly size. Also, a big male leopard will have a dewlap, sort of loose skin hanging around his neck. And there we go, and little Hosanna is playing more than feeding with the kill. Let me just try and move forward for you a little bit there, Jean-Dre. Ooh, that's not good. Bendex is getting stuck. that. I think we can get a little bit further. How's that? Do they get a gap through? <laughs> Practice. Got in the air. Got an eye. Got an ear. Got a nose. Like a game you play with a little child. I got your ear. <laughs> Having too much fun. Now we saw young Shungile play with a diker carcass not so long ago. So as you can see, a lot of those instincts are there. So it's those habits are instinctual. They know, he knows what to do, even though he's a, a little guy. Has he got stuck in a, in a thorn tree? <laughs> but that's Zizzy Fuss. <laughs> How are you going to get out of this one now? He got stuck on his tail, so now he's bitten it. Oh, there we go. He's got rid of it now. Is he still fighting with a stick or is he fighting with some fluffy bench to grab this time? Yes. Fluff. And a stick. He's trying to get that thorny stick away from his playground. No, I couldn't think of anything worse than putting a buffalo thorn in my mouth. It gives you an idea how tough these creatures are. He's getting angry with it. <laughs> Keep talking him. Well, that'll be a lesson. Don't bite buffalo thorns. He might actually have a thorn in his mouth that he's trying to get rid of. When he's tight. <laughs>
was it in his paw? I can't really see from here. Yeah, back to playing. Ray is wondering how we can tell these leopards apart. Well, Ray, fortunately, we spend a lot of time with them. Um, now, with the two cubs, Hosanna is the bigger of the cubs, and that's him. He's the little male. And uh, when he turns around, you can see his face is quite different from his sister's. Uh, not only his spot pattern, but just his general, his his face in general. Uh, his sister's also got quite lovely brown eyes, darker eyes than he does. But at a quick glance, you can tell the difference between the two cubs from their size. Uh, Karula, she's just very distinct. I mean, she is the leopard we see the most although she is lying with her back to us. And little Shongele is sleeping right next to us on the right. I mean, it's just, we're going to stick with the, the leopards at the kill now, see if Hosanna starts doing something fun again. Now, isn't this amazing? We're going to jump from one leopard here on Juma, or oh, actually from three leopards here on Juma to one on Cheetah Plains. Is getting stuck into the rib cage of that adult male impala. You can see those claws extended out as he grips the side of that impala to give himself some leverage. Uh, you can see he's right inside there, all the, the, the main good juicy bits, the liver, the lungs, the heart have probably been eaten already, and a bit of the rump as well. And so now that they've got the good bits, it's time to start working on the rest. Hi, Greg in Oklahoma is wondering, when a leopard is born, does it have all its spots or do they develop as it gets older? No, they're born with all their spots and they just look a little bit tighter together and they're a little bit darker. Now that's so they can hide when they're very young because the mother has to leave them to hunt. Now mom's looking very relaxed at the moment. And I can't see, can you see little naughty Shongile from where you are, Jandre? She was snoozing quite nicely behind a little stump. And Krula is such a fantastic mother and, a, and a, an incredible huntress. And that's two kills in one night. And Karula's family is going to be eating well for the next couple of days. Although those little guys are growing so fast and eating so much that Dyker probably definitely wouldn't have been enough for them. Oh, oh what is Kruda? Oh no, look, she's going to come feed as well. Oh, she might be looking. Here we go to try cover some of the stomach contents. Um, or even the blood to try to make sure the scent doesn't waft and attract hyenas. Lauren in Illinois is wondering whether the male cub would try and mate with his mother or sister. 
Um, not at this age, and I mean, it's always a possibility, but normally by the time the male leopard's going to come into sexual maturity, uh, he's probably going to be quite far away from his natal range. And now lions, it, it happens a lot more often. Um, leopards, less so, but it is possible that he might try. It's just unlikely. Juicy bits there. Now they'd be very careful while they're feeding not to open the stomach contents too much because that smell will permeate through the air and attract possible other predators. It looks like he's after some of the soft organs. It could be kidneys and whatnot left. He also will drink the blood that is pooling inside the rib cage. That's what it looks like he might be doing to a degree now, both eating some of the soft tissue and drinking some of the blood. Now leopards will drink when they have the option to, but they are no means reliant on water. They have the most incredible array of habitats that they can survive in. But they seem to do best in that mixed grassland and woodland like we have here in the low faults of South Africa and some of the biggest male leopards in the world are from this part of the world from this area Well, hello, Mix1011, um, who only found us yesterday. Great to have you back with us again. And Mix1011 says, I only found the stream yesterday. It's been amazing both times. Well, it has. We've been very lucky, though, uh, with the Queen uh, being very forthcoming in showing us. But now I'm so happy to have her cubs back. Now she's made two kills, but an adult and a male impala and a, and a diker in a tree, probably about 400 meters from here. I hope you guys are getting some good screenshots. Now, James Richards wondering is, will Karula fetch that diker and bring it here? Um, or she, will she leave it where it's already hoisted? Uh, she'll leave it where it's hoisted. Um, now, hopefully she hoists, hoists this kill as well. It's a bit heavy for her now an adult male impala, so they still need to eat quite a bit more of it before she's going to be able to hoist this. Um, and there's always the risk when these kills are on the ground that it could be stolen by hyena or lion. Or male leopard will also steal the kill from her, and he might share it, just depends. Now get ready, I'm waiting for him to look up at me with that wearing lipstick. got the right shot yet. I'm hoping little Shongile is going to make her way to join the feast at some point.
Okay, well, we're going to sit here. Hopefully, little Shongile is going to come out shortly. And uh, while we do that, let's go back to Jamie and quarantine. Well, Kuru's on the carcass. Uh, look at that. There we go. She's actually drinking. But it looks like little Hosane is stalking his sister. So the sister is just through the bush there. going to play with his sister or is he just finding a spot where he can lie down? Okay, the sister's just behind that tree he's about to go behind. There she is. Swat, swat. <laughs> Let's see if she feels harassed enough to move. A serious young lady. Let's see how long it takes before he, she, she gets annoyed with him. If I go back, it'll be a bit better, Jandre. I can't go forward. Uh, she's covering up uh, stomach content and blood to stop smell. So here we go. That's what Karula's doing in front of us. Uh, well, she's finished doing now, and off she's walking to lie down. I'm just going to move the vehicle a little bit, see if we can see those cubs a bit better. Oh, our Bendex is giving us problems. At least it's an easy fix. There we go. So we just saw him diving down into the Mawati. He's playing stalk things. He's, there he is. Um, Bobby's wondering, as you know, more and more leopards are born, won't their territories become smaller? Uh, with what happens with female leopards, uh, especially the older they get, the smaller their territories get, and the more cubs they have, the smaller their territories get, as they keep giving sections of their territory off to female cubs. <laughs> what a little horror.
having a grand old time. Hiding in, oh, trying to make himself flat in the little white berry bushes. We're going to be incredibly spoiled for the next little while with these leopards. So, Bobby, what happens is, and with male territories it's a bit different from female territories. So as, as a, a female leopard has more and more female cubs, her territory shrinks. Uh, until, and it's quite often towards the end of uh, her life, when she's around 13, 14 years old, uh, she's left with the worst part of her territory at a time when she's not actually that fit and healthy. So it generally leads to, to a female leopard's demise. Males are a bit different. So what happens is males are normally hold domain for a good four or five, sometimes a bit longer years over an area. And uh, then there seems to be a switch and they sort of swing uh, and move into a slightly different territory. And uh, this is an instinctive response to inbreeding. So by swinging a little bit into a different territory, I'm just going to move a little bit so you guys can see again. Make sure we don't fall off the... How's that, John? Right? Can we get his head? Yeah. Um, There we go. So the males, after about five years of being dominant over an area, will generally shift their territory. It doesn't really matter which direction, but a little bit away from where their core has been. And that's mostly to try to stop them breeding with their, their daughters. And uh, that's a little in, instinctive thing. So they do it without really even knowing that they need to push away from where they're more likely to have lots of offspring. Then again, when they get to sort of 11, 12, uh, they come under pressure from a younger male, normally six, five, six years old, who's coming into an area and will push them in and they'll become like a mvula. He sort of lives on the peripheries at the moment, avoiding conflict as best he can. Oh, it's tired kitty now. Nice cool sand, fat belly. What more could you want as a young leopard? Now, Tanner is wondering, how old are big cat cubs when they go on their first hunt with their mom? Well, it's, they don't really go hunting with their mother. They might be there when she makes a kill, but generally they're left separate. And they don't need to be taught how to hunt. They're instinctive hunters. They have that knowledge ingrained in them. Um, but it could be as young as three weeks, or no, sorry, not three weeks, three months. <laughs> um, as they, if they're following her and she happens to see something, she happens to kill it. Um, she doesn't really, they don't really learn from that. Uh, they're, they're just, they are instinctive hunters. They don't need to be taught. So mothers will generally leave them when they go hunting because they're a bit of a pain when you go hunting. They normally will make their first kill between three and six months. It'll be something small, a lizard or a, a squirrel or um, something like that. Uh, apart from, of course, the many butterflies and moths and grasshoppers they murder before then. But uh, generally their first big kill will be a or big ish kill will be around that sort of six month period. The first major animal, like a impala or a dike or something, will be after a year old. Yeah, okay, let's move to go see if we can see Shongile. Got her there, John, right? We'll try to get a bit closer, but she's. Oh, 
here we go. Hassan has actually come to join little Shongile next to her leadwood stump. Now, oh look at that, isn't that just too sweet? Jerry in Canada is wondering, what happens, what becomes of the rest of the carcass after the leopards are finished with it? So you might get uh, lots of different scavengers feeding off, hyena might finish it off, and um, vultures if they spot it, battalier, tawny eagle. See their ears popping up. Let's look at that it's paw on the sitting there. Look at that. There's a lot of her paw just sitting up on the on on the log there. Now Mick ten eleven is wondering: Do these cats ever scratch at tree bark? And that they do. It's very important uh, for them to do that because it. It helps them clean their nails. You've got to be cleanly, because otherwise, I mean, well, underneath a leopard's nails is not very, very hygienic. It's filled with quite a lot of rotten flesh and such. Oh, there's little Shongi. Oh, she likes that leadwood log, that one. a good pillow. Oh, it's all settling down here. They've all got full bellies, lots of meat still around. Okay, well, we sit here and wait to see what happens next with Karula and the two cubs. Let's go back to Jamie and see how she's been faring down on Cheetah Plains. Definitely still snoozing. As you can see, little Shongele is using that leadwood stump as a very good pillow. It's a tired kitty, got a full belly. just too sweet. You can just see her brother behind her. He's also napping away. And mom's off to our right, also fast asleep. Oh, there you go. Alexander is wondering, how many cubs will a leopard have during its lifetime? Well, it all depends. Oh, the sun's quite bright there. Um, it all depends. Uh, so on average, she'll have her first set of cubs that are around three or four years old. And then only on average every two years from there. So three, six, eight, 10, 12, more or less. 
So generally probably five sets of cubs. Now this also depends on when, uh, if they get killed. So you probably say maybe eight or nine sets. Because remember that leopard cubs have a 70% mortality rate uh, when they are under a year old. Oh, they're still snoozing there. Are there any stations on standby for this crew low sighting? Oh, such a tired little kitty. Oh, I can hear some elephants close by. I don't think we're going to have too much more action for now. I think everyone's got full bellies and is going to snooze. So why don't you guys let me know what you would like to do. Would you like us to stay here with Queen Karula and Hosanna and Shongile? Would you like us to move on and go look for some elephants or maybe some lions? You can do that by using the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or send us an email to questions at wildearth.tv. Calvin's wondering, why do leopard, cheetah, and lions have spiky hair around their mouths? Well, it's not actually hair, that's a, or it is hair, but it's, it's called a whisker, or in big cats it's called vibrissae, and they are sensory organs, and uh, they are able to pick up little vibrations or changes in the air. Also, if they're moving through the bush, uh, to stop them putting their heads into thorns and things like that. Is it mom up? No, everyone is fast asleep. You can just make out Karula through the bush behind me and she is very much a very flat cat in the guari thicket. There we go, you can just see her belly there. Okay, we can't see the cubs from where we are now, they've gone completely flat. I'm going to just move back a little bit, see if we can see Karula. Lala would like to know, we said she knows Karula will try to protect her cubs from danger. But uh, would the cubs try to protect each other from danger? Uh, no, they wouldn't. I think it would be pretty much each little leopard for itself and who could get away the fastest. I want to do a little bit of 25-point 25, 25 turn to get out of here. So it seems like the majority of people are voting to go find some elephants. Let's see if we can get one last uh, look at... Queen Karula, and then we're going to head to where I can hear those elephants breaking branches. We got. So this is where we spotted her from initially. And I think the view from the side is a little better. Not much though. Go. 
Okay, let's go check for those elephants. They didn't sound too far away. Now, while we try to get towards those, or oh, they literally, <laughs> I can hear them coming closer. Let's go um, see what Jamie's up to in the meantime. 